I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this Cisco certification training video where we're going to take a look at Frame Relay LMI. I'm going to bring a pod of Cisco routers up here in a moment where Frame Relay is already up and running and show you a verification command for Frame Relay. Some things to look out for that indicate when your network's working properly and then perhaps not so properly. And we need to know about the LMI not just for your CSENT and CCNA exams, but you've got to know about it for real world networks today because Frame Relay is everywhere. And frankly, without LMI, as you'll see in a few minutes, we have no Frame Relay. Now, the LMI, when you look at the full name of it, Local Management Interface, it sounds like something physical, right? Or maybe even a GUI, but it's not. There are messages sent between the DCE. The, which is typically the service provider's device, the frame relay switch, and the DTE, which is our Cisco router. And the LMI status messages really serve as keep alives for that particular connection. Because if keep alives are not continually received by both the DCE and the DTE, the frame connection itself is going to drop. The line protocol will go down. And the LMI also indicates the PVC status to the router, which is going to be reflected as either active or inactive. The key here is that the LMI types must match on the DTE and the DCE for the permanent virtual circuit, that PVC, to be established and then to be kept alive. Because again, as with just about everything else in Cisco land, we can't just build something and then say, okay, that's done. There's going to be a keep alive there. And in Frame Relay's case, that is the LMI. There are three types of LMIs, Cisco, which is the default, ANSI, and Q933A. Now I'm going to bring up a pod here of equipment, and we're going to be on router 1 here in just a moment. And here's a command I like to use right off the bat if I'm having some kind of issue with frame relay, and it's show frame LMI. And here you can see that we have one interface, Serial 0, that's running Frame Relay. It is a DTE, and notice that the LMI type is Cisco. So it's set to the default. And for your CSENT and CCNA, I wouldn't worry too much about all of these values at the top, but I would definitely concern myself with these, especially the inquiries sent, the messages received, and the timeouts. You can see the timeouts value is at zero, which is what we want. And that's a pretty high number there on the other two. Let's run the same command now and see if it's incremented since the last time. And you can see that it has. When you see the inquiries sent and the messages received continuing to increment, then you're in good shape. And of course, show frame map will show you whether your frame maps are actually up. And I have other videos dealing with frame map statements, so be sure to check those out. But again, the LMI type has to match. And let's just say, since we're in a lab environment, we can do this. We'll go on serial zero and put in the full command frame relay LMI type. And you can see the choices there are Cisco, ANSI, and Q933A. And I'll change that to ANSI. I put ANS there, but it'll take it. And now let's run show frame LMI again. We don't have any timeouts yet, but I suspect we're going to have some here pretty shortly. And let's see. We see the sent incrementing. But we haven't seen the received. You'll notice also the LMI type has changed to ANSI. And you can see there that we have a timeout. So our timeouts have started incrementing because we have an LMI mismatch. And I'll try not to make you dizzy by running this too often. But you see now we're up to two. It's going to be every 10 seconds that that increments up. And we've got a holding time expire because we've got EIGRP. Now our EIGRP adjacency is down that we had running because our frame relay connection has gone down. And if we run a show interface serial zero, and we will see right at the top, serial zero is up, line protocol is down, of course. That means that physically the interface is fine, but there's a logical issue. And of course, here you and I certainly know what that is. It's an LMI mismatch. So we'll go ahead and change that back. And then we're going to talk about LMI auto sense here a bit. 
you can just put it right back to LMI type Cisco. You don't need to change, uh, excuse me, close the interface, reload the router, or anything like that. And as soon as that save finishes up, we'll start doing an up arrow again, check frame relay, show frame LMI, and hopefully those other two values will start incrementing and the timeouts will stop. Remember, you can always use your up arrow to go through the last few commands, and we'll see how this goes. You'll notice the LMI type has changed back to Cisco and the line protocol is already back up, so it's just that fast. And you can see now that the LMI inquiry sent and messages received have both started incrementing again. We need both of those to increment. The timeouts have stopped incrementing. You'll see also we had EIGRP running on it and that adjacency has now come back as a result of getting frame relay back up. So without frame relay, not only do we not have layer two connectivity, obviously we're not gonna have layer three. I do wanna show you something called LMI AutoSense though. And I'll just bring this up from the website. Now we can hard code the LMI type as we just did, but also there's a default setting LMI AutoSense. When an LMI type is not, autom is not manually configured, what should happen is this, the DTE, the Cisco router, when we open that interface the first time, it's going to send one LMI status message for each LMI type. And what's going to happen is, is that the switch sees those and then the router waits for a response. Now the router is initially going to send three LMI messages, one for each kind, Cisco LMI, Cisco LMI, Cisco and CNQ933A. The switch will then respond only with the LMI type that it uses, which in this case is Cisco, and the router basically says to itself, okay, I received a Cisco LMI message back, so now I will only send Cisco LMI from this point on. So initially, you've got three messages going out from the DTE, one coming back from the DCE, and then the DTE will just start sending that particular LMI type. I want to thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this LMI video on Frame Relay. I also want to invite you out to the website where we've got quite a few free uh, webinars going on, Frame Relay Fundamentals, uh, Ether Channel webinars, other topics too. You can see the current schedule and the registration links at thebryantadvantage.com slash ccnawebinars.htm. And again, thanks for taking just a few minutes to watch the video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the webinars and at the website.